It's time and welcome to our show. Yeah. I don't know what the hell I, mean. I don't just made that up. Hey, everybody, welcome. Welcome once again to our Trippy Food live stream, a uh, typically a weekly thing. Um, a little bit of lag between my voice and what I'm actually seeing, so hopefully everything's okay on your end. Audio okay? Video okay? Everything okay? All right, so we got a couple people, uh, a couple people in the chat, uh, four people, if that, uh, that little thing that, um, that little number there is accurate. Uh, so it looks like we're we're starting off a little bit slow, but it's a big weekend. It is a big. It, it is the I believe it the second day of Lunar New Year. So uh, this is uh, this is the year of the ox. So always so remember to stop writing year of the rat on your checks. Make sure you. But this is Lunar New Year. So happy Lunar New Year to everybody. Uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So you know big Valentine's Day weekend everybody getting flowers and chocolates and uh, things along those lines. And we will naturally have a very special Valentine's Day episode for you. However, uh, ours is going to be a little bit different. So um, I think our Valentine's Day episode for tomorrow is for people with broken hearts. So so um, it, it will be appropriate to that um, because you know those Everyone gets forgotten on, on Valentine's Day. You know, it's all couples and stuff like that. And so this is for people like who aren't necessarily couples. On Valentine's Day, we'll have a Valentine's Day special tomorrow. So you can look forward to that. Also, um, Monday, we have an episode coming out that we filmed with the Trips from Canada. And I, hopefully they'll be on here in a little bit. Um, and uh, we, we, uh, we, filmed a, um, we filmed an episode with them. That comes out Monday. So that'll be fun. And... Uh, did you have a cake on your birthday? I did have a cake. Um, I don't know what kind of cake it was. It was sort of like sort of like tiramisu, but uh, but uh, more more like pudding in it or more creamy. So I you know I actually don't know uh, what it was. You know Claudia actually picked it up, but I actually had a pretty good cake. So uh, you know a little cake, so you don't have to eat a lot of cake. It was really nice. One candle because you know eventually the weight of the candles you know collapses the cake. So we just went with one candle, and obviously. I had a glass of water on the table, and when it was time to blow up the candles, I just took the candle and dunked it in the water because, you know, COVID, All right? And it went, so that brings up an inter interesting point, though. It's funny that that um, it takes COVID for us to realize that all these years we've been blowing on the cake, right? For our birthdays, we've been blowing on the blow up the candles, and you're and you're blowing all over the cake, and so so in times of COVID. You know that becomes a big thing, right? And I, I've seen some memes of people like trying to blow out the candles with their mask on and stuff, which is really kind of funny. But then it's but if you think about it, all these years, decades, people have been blowing out the candle and and just blowing all over the cake. So I, I think from now on, even after COVID, I'm not going to blow out the candles anymore. I'm just going to like douse them. You know, yeah, it depends on how many there are. If there's 60, I'll have to figure something out. But one candle, that's easy. Ten candles, somewhat easy. You know, we'll figure it out. So we got some other people sneak into the room. We have Adam Hebb. Welcome back, Adam. And Lynn801, speaking of Canada. Uh, let's see, did I miss anybody? I did not miss anybody yet. I make sure I have that on live chat, so I'm not, it's not on top chat. I'm not missing anybody. Um, oh, Ryan Jones in the room. Ryan, there was something that I wanted to talk to you about, but I can't remember what it was. So uh, if you can remember what it was, let me know, and we'll talk about it. Get creative, blow them out with a leaf blower. Yeah, and then the person sitting across the table is covered with cake. I think they're probably well. It depends on depends on how heavy a cake it is, right? You know, like a a, a nice wet cake with with pudding and stuff in it, and 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 fill. You know, that that would probably survive. But you know, you'd get a little bit of frosting on people. That would be interesting, though. That would definitely be interesting. Hey, Chris Willis, welcome. Hey, welcome to the room. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, it's picking up. It's picking up here, and the doodle is in the room. The, now I've got it figured out. Here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I've got it figured out. Doodle hears me talking in this direction, and he what he knows that it means it's snack time. He knows that I'm going to be opening snacks, so he hears me talking, and he uh, he automatically uh, takes a beeline in here because he knows there's going to be snacks. But I have snacks for him because you know, um, I don't know, I don't know if people's snacks are good for him. And I don't think he, you know, he, he would eat anything. He would just like, he would just grab and eat anything. Like, it's really being, look at this. It's just, hey, Doodle. Doodle, you want to say hi? Huh? 
He's just being calm there with his little, little pause. And his like, like Bernie Sanders pause there. There we go. All right, Doodle, you wanna you wanna like here? You wanna chill here and then in here, and I'll get you a snack here. So as soon as I open my first snack, I'll get you a snack. How does that sound? I don't know how that sounds. You can't answer me. Hey, the trip's in the room. You must have heard your you must have heard your your ears were burning. I was just telling uh, in the room that um, that the episode that we filmed will be out on Monday. So Monday morning, uh, the episode that we filmed with the troops, which which was a lot of fun, and I think you guys are gonna enjoy that. So. Uh, so welcome, the trips. Uh, which trips do we have? Do we have all three of you, or or just one? Do we have? Usually it's Steve, I think. But um, anyways, the trips in the room. If you guys haven't checked their channel out, definitely do that. It's I, I really like the way they do that. They have that their their little alcove set up. It's really nice. They have like the on, live on air sign and logos and everything. It's really done really well. Done really really well. Uh, all doodles needed was the gloves. I know, right? You know, he doesn't need a hat because Bernie didn't wear a hat. So just Eric here. Oh, hey, hey, Eric, welcome. I forget that, like, you know, one of you can use the, you know, your trips account and and, and we don't know who it is. So uh, so welcome, Eric, to the room. All right. Uh, so let's see. We covered important things. We covered Lunar uh, lunar Year. We covered uh, Valentine's Day. Um, so I usually... Um, you know, toward, hopefully, tr tr I tried towards the beginning of the week. Sometimes I don't always get to it at the beginning of the week. Sometimes it's the day before. And I always try to put on, put up what we're going to have uh, on our show for snacks. But I, I, I'm going to sneak an extra one here because uh, my friend, um, Michelle Grant, uh, I know some of you may or may not know Michelle. Uh, she is the grilled cheese girl. So I, actually, she uh, was one of the founders of the grilled cheese truck. Um, she is a uh, chef in her own right. Uh, she has had a catering service. Uh, she has a, a kosher food service. And she sent over um, these. Uh, it says crumbled blue cheese, but they are not crumbled blue cheese. But it, it's chicken chicken chicharron. So it is it is like fried chicken skins. So we're going to try those too. I don't know where we'll put it in, but we'll squeeze those in somehow. I always forget it's not obvious which one is using. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. You're just three of you, but and and you know, so maybe it's like the trips dash Eric or the trips dash Kelly or something like that. So, hey, Steve Russell in the room. Welcome, Steve. Good to see you back. Um, everybody's getting familiar. That's nice. All right. Uh, let's see. Well, we still don't have new uh, cards. Hang on a second. Our 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 famous food and drink cards. We don't have any. We haven't gotten new ones yet, so we'll do what we did last time: is we'll pretend we're reading off the cards. We have uh, some some uh, food trivia. I'd like to get some travel trivia in there too. We'll have to work that out. We'll get some true food and travel trivia because I always think that the uh, the travel aspect of trippy food uh, kind of gets uh, gets left behind a little bit. And I know a lot of that has to do with COVID. The fact we haven't been re really traveling since COVID, which has been like over uh, almost I guess come March it'll be a year. And um, and so I think that kind of gets left behind. However, on Tuesday there is another there's a travel episode coming out. So it's a small one, a little one, you know, a little fast, a little quickie. But um, but you know, it just kind of felt like that was fine, kind of fallen behind. And um, and then I think we're gonna have some adventures here with uh, Matt Zion from Reckless Eating Monday, and uh, maybe we'll do some more more travely type stuff with Matt. So I think that's that's going on. Now. Oh, hey, Philip Gerard. So Philip Gerard snuck in their own. Hey, old guy. But I now, Tom. I didn't know if if Philip was 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 saying hello to you, hi, old guy, or he was just saying I'm an old guy. Hello, old guy. But either way, hey, Philip, welcome to the room, brother Philip. Uh, Bob is in the room. R e a r e a. I always mess that up because I tried to break that up. R e a Junior music. Uh, yes, I am wearing a spam shirt. Very. Uh, that was that was how astute of you to notice just from the little bit of the P and the little bit of the A that was showing. Uh, we are wearing a spam shirt because we're going to have spam baked beans, sausage and spam, spam eggs and spam, spam bloody bloody vikings. Um, the funny thing was is is uh, you know I was doing a little bit of research on spam because most people know. Uh, I mean, besides the um, besides the meat. Spam. Uh, a lot of people know uh, spam as like unwanted email. 
And it's not necessarily an, an email thing. So, so spam being used that way goes a lot farther back. And it's based on that Monty Python episode because what's happening is, is they're, they're trying to conduct, they're trying to order off a menu and everything. And this whole thing about the spam comes out, the Vikings are singing and everything. And so basically this goes back to the time of Usenet, uh, of the BBS and Usenet, when, um, when people would just kind of flood it with nonsensical stuff just to kind of flood it and drown out the conversation that was going on. So this goes like way back before even like email. And, um, and so that's where the, where the term spam was used from an electronic sense, um, not based on the food spam, but based on the Monty Python um, spam skit. So let's see, did I forget anybody? Um, my brother needs to change his handle to old guy. Well, old guy's already taken. I'm going to have to like older guy. Uh, I'll have to figure something out. Hey, Drew, horse in the room. Welcome, Drew. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> Bliff, Biff, Biff. I'm not sure what Biff did I, something I said, maybe having a few drinks before the fights. So like, are you going to drunk and fight? Or is there a, is there like a, a a big like a boxing match or the MMA stuff going on? Chris, help me out here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. No more typing for me. <laughs> I mean, you can't say it though, because you know we're just we're just text here. We're just text. Hey, Cowboy Hanover. Now Cowboy Hanover uh, is fine and caught a stream, but which like. I don't know. Are you like somebody like, do you go by another name besides Cowboy Hanover? Because I don't recognize your name. Um, and I don't recognize like, so are you um, like, who are you Cowboy Hanover? Or can we call you Hanover? Um, welcome to the channel. And uh, so this is your first time in the stream. Welcome, everybody. Please say hello to Cowboy Hanover, whoever Cowboy Hanover is. Never thought I'd hear a Usenet discussion here. Oh, uh, so uh, something cool. Do you remember Usenet? It's actually, you know, like people were talking about, I started my blog at like uh, mid 2000s, like 2008, 2009, something around those lines. And somebody says, oh, like, uh, are you new to blogging? And I'm like, sort of, but I used to do something like that on Usenet. And they're like, what is Usenet? And I'm like, do some research, do a little bit of research, look it up, see what Usenet is. But yeah, it's been around for a while. How about based on the Weird Al Spam song? I haven't heard the Weird Al Spam song, but I don't know if the Weird Al Spam song is, uh, it's gotta be based on food, I think. I'll have to check that out. I like Weird Al. And if you, uh, by the way, speaking of Weird Al, uh, check it out because uh, this was years ago, years ago, maybe like four years ago, four, maybe five years ago. Um, we did, um, th from the movie UHF that uh, starred Weird Al Yankovic, we did the um, hot dog Twinkie, which was a snack that his friend liked, and he made it to cheer his friend up and everything, for the hot dog Twinkie. So we did actually did an episode on that. So check that out. That's our connection with Weird Al. All right, uh, MMA fighting tonight. Oh, okay. All right. Um, you don't usually watch those, but, you know, I know what they are. I'm new. Call me Hanover. That's fine with me. Okay, Hanover. Welcome to the room, Hanover. Uh, Usenet was a little bit before my time, but I browsed it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, use, uh, sadly, Usenet was not before my time. Uh, and 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 only like like the hardcore techies probably know what even know what Usenet is. So, um, but uh, it was like you know think of it as you know obviously it was the internet, but think of it. I I don't know what to think of it. It was a, it was bulletin board I think based on a bulletin board service, and it was before you had. Um, uh, graphical user anything based on a bulletin board service and it was before you had um, uh, graphical user interfaces so basically it was, it was all text-based it was fun stuff loved UHF it also started Michael Rich oh that's right that's right it did uh, I think I think one of my favorite characters in it was um, Raul when he who I think it was the janitor and they gave him his own show and it was called Raul's Wild Kingdom and I think that I love the part where he had the ant farm and he says Look at this. They build these intricate little tunnels, and they really hate it when you do this. And you start shaking up the ant, the ant farm. I thought it was pretty funny, too. All right. Uh, so uh, let's review our um, our offerings today. So, again, we have the um, the chicken chicharron or the fried chicken skins uh, provided to us from 
our friend Michelle Grant. Thank you, Michelle, if you're watching. Uh, or if you're watching after the fact, thank you. Um, UHF like WSBK Channel 38. Uh, a little less um, programmed like w like uh, WSBK, because Channel 38 had some like some really serious problems. Remember, Channel 38 was the ones that carried the Boston Bruins, right? I mean, so so they were like a serious channel. So, uh, but UHF was kind of like this this like nothing channel, and they didn't have any programming, and so they just kind of threw it together themselves. So a little bit less than WSBK, uh, but uh, you know, good analogy. All right, let's review our snacks. So our I said snacks, and he jumps up. All right, Doodle. You know what? You're a good boy, so I'm going to give you one of your snacks. See, I learned. I have his snacks ready. This is his chicken snacks. Oh, we're running low on his chicken snacks. I need to get him some more. Mm. There you go, Doodle. And he's off like a bride's nighty. There he goes. Mm, that's getting a little stale. I mean, it still tastes good. It's getting stale. He doesn't seem to mind them. Anyways, let's review our snacks. So the first one is Trader Joe's Organic Mango Fruit Bar. So not sure what to expect here. I don't know if it's kind of like a um, like a like one of those those energy bars or something like that, but it is a um, Trader Joe's Organic Mango Fruit Bar. Maybe it's like... Um, fruit leather or something along those lines. I don't know, but uh, it looked interesting. So we are going to try Trader Joe's Organic Mango Fruit Bar. And it gets crazier from here. Ah, oh, something cool. You just retracted your, your statement. I didn't I didn't catch it to see what it was. Tom, um, old guy in Colorado, had done that earlier. He made a statement and then he retracted it. And uh, I don't know that he had to. I mean, it was just kind of one of those things that, you know, it was kind of fun. We'll, we'll, we'll see in a second if we were accurate on that. Hey, Maddie, how you doing? Maddie, hot, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, Hatala, Hatala, I think. Maddie Hatala, welcome to the room. No, uh, Phil, uh, we have gone through all the cards. So this this whole big stack of cards, we have gone through it. And um, and so we, uh, so, but we're going to fake it out. So I'm going to pretend like I'm reading off a card, but I'm going to do some, you know, food trivia and stuff like that. But we don't read the trip. We don't read the cards until we actually start opening the snacks. So I'm just reviewing the snacks right now, and we're not going to actually open them right now. We're just reviewing everything that we're going to be doing today, and then we'll we'll read a card before we actually um, open each of the snacks. So we're good. All right. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? Nope. Okay. You guys, keep me honest, because you know sometimes like I'm talking. I'm feeding Doodle, I'm opening snacks, I'm reading snacks and everything, and then I miss something that gets there, and then I really want to make sure that I address all of your your questions, your comments, etc. As a matter of fact, remind me when Jesse Torres comes in the room, because I have to follow up with something in Jesse Torres. Also, uh, Amy Cakey. So, you know, if they sneak in the room, let me know, because I got some, like, follow-up stuff with them that I missed. <laughs> it's still another well phil we make it up as we go you know like i like i said and and when we do read the cards it's kind of like like um uh, if you know it throw it out if you don't if you want to guess at it throw it out there and if you want to look it up and then put the answer up there do that too because rules there are no rules john millard in the room everybody say hello to john millard you guys are I, like, I don't even have to tell you this anymore because you guys are really, really good about welcoming people to the room. So, but welcome, John. All right. Uh, number two, maybe, is uh, click balls. Oh, um, let's see. Da, da, yeah. Okay. Uh, number two are click balls. And uh, the thing, that, they look like malted milk balls, but they're not malted milk balls. They are um, chocolate corn puffs. So they're corn puffs coated with chocolate, which is really weird. Uh, and they are kosher because these are from Israel. So uh, the company, I guess, is called, uh, no, this is, the, is called Click, I think. The company is called Click. And uh, and again, these are from Israel. So uh, Click Balls. Okay, uh, that's that's our second one. Uh, let's see. Oh, Scott Mansfield in the room. Hello, Scott. I think maybe we already... No, I did not say Scott, uh, hello to Scott yet. So welcome, Scott. 
Like pop cereal covered in chocolate. I think so. I think that's probably or like um, like those kind of uh, corn foam peanuts. I mean, not foam peanuts, but you know the kind of corn corn ones. I think we've had those before. Like um, what are those? Um, there's a uh, popular brand of those like puffed corn snacks, and I think and they're covered with chocolate. It's not like a weird con like to me corn and chocolate don't kind of go together, but we'll see. We'll, we'll check that out. That sounded really interesting. Uh, third on our hit parade, the company is called Nika, Nika brand. I think it's Nika. I think that's the correct pronunciation of these. And these are cuttlefish flavored chips. Like who doesn't want cuttle cuttlefish flavored chips? You've got a lot of little interesting little, uh, little specks and stuff on there. I don't know if that's like specks of nori or something. Let's, let's check out the ingredients here. Uh, ingredients, um, let's see, starch, uh, corn and potato, vegetable oil, uh, rice, palm, uh, sugar, of course there's sugar, sweet sake, that's interesting, uh, yeast extract, seasoning, they don't say what the seasoning is, um, shrimp, why is there shrimp in there, uh, cuttlefish, sea lettuce, sea lettuce, that's probably what the little speck things are, because uh, sea lettuce is probably some sort of like seaweed, um and, and processed starch that's really interesting uh so then then uh it says contains soybean wheat cuttlefish and shrimp that's really weird where they, they where it's shrimp because i don't there's nothing on the on the outside that says shrimp it just says cuttlefish so we'll see we'll check that out and uh nika is from where they're from japan so this is japanese sonic you always come into the room with a with a political thing, and you know that we don't do politics here. So, um, so yes, uh, Trump is now acquitted. Ha, okay, we got that out there. Right, let's move on. Um, puffed corn ball cereal. That, it's um, that's not really. Oh, kicks. Um, no, no. There's uh, there's like a puffed uh, puffed corn snack. They look like uh, the, like not the the um, baked Cheetos, but they look like the you know the old fashioned Cheetos, and they're made from corn. So well, what are Cheetos made of? Maybe Cheetos are made from corn. I don't know. I don't know that. I love corn nuts too, Phil. They're really loud though. Um, uh, so I started out eating corn nuts and then Trader Joe's has something called Inca corn, which is kind of, it's the same thing as corn nuts, but they're bigger and, and I think they have more flavor. And I like the texture. And then there's, um, we did, I think a couple of weeks ago, we did, there was a Spanish company that does something similar in the corn nuts and everything. So yeah, really good. I like corn nuts as well. Um, no, yeah, it's okay, Sonic. We got that out of the way. Now let's, now we move on. So, uh, let's see. Did I miss somebody? Nope. We're just going. We're just going. Okay. Uh, corn nuts are tasty. You always feel like I'm breaking a filling on them. Well, I mean, I have good teeth because my, my father always told us, take good care of your teeth because you never know when you'll need to be identified by them. That's not true, but I just, I just decided to say that. Um, but I do have good teeth. Uh, so I used to chew ice cubes. The only thing is, is that, um, the dentist told me because of that, I have like little tiny cracks in my teeth, but they're still in good shape. I have one cavity. I don't even know if I really had that. I think the dentist had to make a BMW payment or something along those lines. So, you know, that's what it is. Cheetos and cheese puffs are great with roast beef sandwich. Yeah, but the, uh, so, Sonic, the question is, um, are Cheetos made from corn? What are what What is the grain that Cheetos, you know, the basic Cheetos are made from? I don't know that. Hey, Zach Attack Studios in the room. Hello. Welcome. Just watch a video of how Cheetos is a byproduct of producing food for livestock. That makes sense, I think. You know, usually, like, nothing goes to waste, right? Uh, nothing goes to waste uh, in, in, the, in, in big industry, right? When you're producing a product and everything, you know, absolutely nothing is going to go to waste. So, uh, all right. Uh, and then our fourth snack is, um, and I had to write this down because obviously, like, everything is in, is this Chinese? It is, um, yes, Chinese. And uh, these are, uh, the company is, I probably pronounced this incorrectly, Anhui Yuzhi Yue. And I'm sure that's completely wrong. Uh, these are salted egg uh, fish skins. So, uh, I mean, just the, the, the fish skin, salted egg, and I mean, it just sounded really, really nice, really cool. Um, I noticed that a lot of, 
these products, especially the products that I get at, like, I got these at Hawaii Supermarket, which is a, a very, very large Asian grocery in um, San Gabriel, California. And I noticed a lot of them have that warning that um, like the Proposition 65 California warning, which tells you that the products have things that may cause cancer. And this has a cancer warning on it, cancer and reproductive or reproductive harm. I think this one might too. This one does not. But some of the other ones do. But I think that might be in the packaging. I think it might be like in the ink or something that they're using in the packaging. And because it is part of the entire product, they have to specify that. I hope, I hope it's not, you know, something that we're eating is going to cause cancer. But, you know, you know us. We're going to eat it anyway. Uh, okay. Somebody, uh, somebody beeped in there. But um, it's not part of the show. So uh, we'll see. Uh, something cool. I have no idea what what that what you are saying there is that oh at Sonic Jet oh okay happy it's happy uh, happy Lunar New Year yeah Sonic we we did that at the top remember this is the year of the ox uh, we did that at the top but you had not come in the room yet but happy happy Lunar New Year to you as well Sonic uh, video said it was a janitor at the company who would take that byproduct home and put cheese dust on it and their history was made. You know, it's it's funny because it's usually the you know the workers that come up with a, a product like that. So uh, one uh, good example of that is Kopi Luwak. So for those who don't know what Kopi Luwak is, Kopi Luwak is coffee. It comes from Indonesia, and um, so the way uh, Kopi, the I guess the way they started making initially started making Kopi Luwak is there is an animal called a palm civet. Some people call it a civet cat. It's not technically a cat. But it, uh, the, the animal's called a palm civet. They live in the coffee plantations. And so when coffee grows on trees, it has uh, this fruit around the coffee bean. And the uh, palm civet likes the taste of that, uh, that they call a coffee cherry. They like the taste of that fruit. And so they eat that. And then they poop it out, but the bean doesn't get digested. So in the coffee plantations, the workers were not allowed to take home the good coffee. Because you know, obviously they're going to sell the, the good coffee. The, the plantation worker is not allowed to take the good coffee home. And so what they would do is they would walk along the trails and they would find this coffee that this palm civet had pooped out. And they would say, well, they're not going to use that. Well, we'll just use that. There, there looks like there's some good coffee beans in there. So they would take them home, clean them up, roast them, grind them, uh, and make coffee. And what they found when they did that was that Due to the enzymes in the animal's digestive system, it neutralized the acid in the coffee and it made for like this really, really smooth cup of coffee. And so, so they were just doing that. They were saying like, you know, well, we don't even want the good coffee off the trees. We, we you know, we're going to take this home and make this because this is an even better coffee. And then, of course, you know, when the coffee plantation found out about it, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we're going to sell this and we're going to make a lot of money off this because this is better stuff. So, again... One of the things that the workers found, but then got taken away from the workers. And um, and it's, so it's very expensive. It's like, uh, I think if you find it in the, the, the like the whole beans and you find them cheap, uh, they're going to they're gonna run you maybe about $200 a pound, something along, along those lines. But um, about uh, maybe going on 10 years ago, a little bit longer than that. Um, I, me, me and some coworkers, we went in on a, on a pound of the beans. We got a brand new coffee maker. We only used uh, distilled water. Um, we uh, didn't wash the cups with soap. Uh, we di we used um, uh, you know brand new cups. And um, and on honestly, it was the best coffee that I ever had in my life. It was really really good. So I don't know if it's worth that much money, but that's the story. Again, we kind of gone off on a on a on a tear because Drew had mentioned that you know the janitor of the company was one of. And again, it's one of those things. Thank you, thank you to the workers that we now have a, a, like a product that uh, that people enjoy. So, uh, let's see. Um, ox, ox. Okay, Scott Mansfield. Got everybody. You're the oxtail soup. That sounds good. I love oxtail Sonic. That's really good. You're the ox. Yeah, we should make do a oxtail soup for you're the ox. That's a great idea. Because I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Lunar New Year lasts like a week or something. I mean, you had like yesterday was the first day of it, I, but I think it's like a, a week long thing. So please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. This is a food channel, so I don't think it's too far off. Yeah, I agree. Well, we're a food and travel channel. And then the thing is, 
is the travel, like, like I said, sometimes gets left behind. Oh, to talk about the history. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean, honestly, you know, we go through the food trivia cards. We talk about history all the time. So the moon celebrate. Uh, the, yeah, the moon celebration is in September, I think. I think that's September. And they, what do they call it? The, the mid-autumn festival is what they call the moon, the moon celebration, if I'm not mistaken. You should do a history of food segments. Well, uh, I don't know that we would do that on the YouTube channel, so maybe that's a good that's a good thing for a podcast. Maybe that would be a good like a good podcast thing is to do um, history of food. You know, just take a food and go over the history of the food on the podcast. I think that sounds like a good. Would you guys like that? Would you get? Would you guys subscribe to a podcast if I did a podcast? Let me know. All right. Um, so uh, we did the snacks. Now let's re review our beverages because we're already at like half an hour in. Uh, Janice has not yelled at me yet and said, hey, Val, we got to get started. But we, we got to review our beverages first. So uh, the first, eh, let's see, is that, no, I'm going to do it in a different order here. Let's do this. Okay. So our first one, the company is called Foco, I think, Foco. Uh, they are from Thailand. And this is a pennywort drink. Uh, pennywort is that um, that uh, plant you see here. And they do an extract of it and they make a drink from it. I have no idea what this is going to taste like. Uh, but we're going to drink this uh, penny wort drink. That's going to be our first one. Our second one is um, uh, the company is called Wonder Farm, and the product is Bird's Nest uh, White Fungus Drink. Now, uh, it is not Bird's Nest like Bird's Nest Soup. This is not actually a Bird's Nest. There is a fungus called a Bird's Nest Fungus. You guys should uh, Google that, Google image that, because it, uh, it's really, I would say, cute. Uh, so the fungus grows almost like a little cup, and then... Uh, I'm not sure if they're just very, very large spores or it's just part of the plant or anything, but they have these little things that look like little eggs in it. So it looks like a, like a maybe a hummingbird nest or something, and that's why they call the fungus bird's nest. So this is made, this is a drink that's made from that bird's nest fungus. And uh, Wonder Farm is from um, Vietnam. And then uh, last, I think, we're going to do this uh, palm juice. And uh, I think it's just, th there's no sugar in here. It says that um, it says that it's from made from palm sap, but they show palm fruit on here. So like, I don't know what the deal is here, here but it's palm juice. I, I don't think any of these are carbonated. So I think these are all kind of like juicy drinks. Uh, we'll see, and we'll try those out. And then we have, naturally we have, um, I tried to find three shot glasses that we haven't used before. So we have this one, it's really hard to see, but this is from the 2009 Gilroy Garlic Festival. Um, but it's like like very, very, very small writing. Really hard to see that. Uh, but uh, the, we have, uh, this one is from Big Bear Lake in California uh, with our little uh, crystal uh, snowflakes on it. And then the uh, third one, San Antonio, Texas with uh, a band of mariachi chilies. So that's what we got here. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? History of tripe. Uh, well, yeah, you, you you know, you could actually do a history of tripe. Now, the history of tripe is that it, you know, grows inside a cow. But um, but the history of when people started eating it, there, there would be a history there. So you're absolutely right. Uh, did you know Anna Richardson is going to do a special food TV show on the history of America's famous food products, fast food empires like McDonald's? I did not know that, but I do know, know that now. So hopefully it'll be on a channel that I get and I don't have cable, so... We'll see. We would subscribe to your podcast. Well, thank you, Janice. Um, maybe I'll do a podcast then. The Foods That Built America on the History Channel 2021. I'll have to look look for that. I like I like Adam Richmond. I, I I told you guys that I met Adam, Adam Richmond, I think. Um, if not, I don't, I like a, do I have a picture on the Facebook page when I met him? It was just a random meeting. I, I just bumped into him on the street in Portland, Oregon. And we, we talked for like 40 minutes. I, I To me, I have no personal evidence that he's not a nice guy based on our conversation. The fact that the fact that he was willing to talk to some guy that just randomly ran into him on the street and has no idea who he is. I mean, who, he has no idea who I am and, and can have like a half an hour to 40 minute conversation with him. Seems like like nice guy territory there. I looked that fungus up. They are pretty cute. Right, Drew? They are. I think they're like they're adorable little little fungus some people consider them like weeds like um like uh unwanted plants and everything but you know you can, they're edible you can eat them so um uh, we're gonna drink them is that like the plant where palm oil comes from well it's a palm you know i mean 
you know, palms are typically trees. I don't know if they're like short, like, you know, palms that maybe only grow that high. There's, I mean, palms are a large group. Like uh, dates come from palms. Uh, no, figs don't come from palms. But dates come from palms. So uh, bottle don't look like dates. But you know, it's, uh, so I don't know which particular tree palm oil comes from. Uh, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it's that. You know, maybe maybe it's like drinking palm oil. So I don't know. We'll see. My video is breaking up. Is it still breaking up? Got to go. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry to, to, to see you go, Eric. But uh, good. I'm glad you were able to join us. And make sure that you look for that, the episode that we did together uh, coming out on Monday. So uh, that was a lot of fun. And uh, tell everybody else that I, I really enjoyed uh, filming with you guys. So uh, happy, uh, great Saturday to you as well. Uh, the trips, Eric from the trips, leaving the room. Everybody, please say goodbye to Eric. Um, loved him on the original by Eric the trips. Yep, that white can with the green plant drink reminds me of Asian grass jelly. Yeah, I think they do. I think this company makes that grass jelly drink. I love that grass jelly drink too. It's really good. Um, but um, I think, and I think they like that grass jelly drink uh, comes in different varieties. And I think like some of them, they like have boba in it or something. I don't remember. But I think, I do think that this com this company makes a, a bunch of different fruit drinks. And I think grass jelly is one of the ones that they do. I I'm trying to remember if we ever did grass jelly on the live stream. If um, I'll have to go back and take a look. And if we did, we'll, we'll do it on an upcoming stream. My video is okay. Thank you, Sonic. It's snowing like crazy here again. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think they were supposed, I think um, when I was filming with the trips, uh, that was, what day were we filming? Was it yesterday? Yesterday, it was Thursday. It was Thursday. And they said they were expecting more snow. And I think uh, Julie uh, uh, and Bob, you can you can chime in here on hot days. Yeah, the thing about grass jelly is uh, grass jelly is uh, typically um, like gelatin. Uh, gelatin uh, comes from, and they cook down uh, the, the, the skin and the bones of animals. Uh, usually, uh, it's usually beef, but I think they do it with pork as well. Like, if, for instance, you you cook, they cook down a pig's head and the trotters, the the pork front, to make um, head cheese. So the gelatin that's in the head cheese. So gelatin comes from animal skins and bones uh, from cooking that down. But uh, but the uh, grass jelly comes from a particular plant that has that same sort of. I think it's collagen. Has that collagen in it that that uh, is uh, creates like this gelatin. So that's what uh, that's where grass jelly comes from. So it's 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 actually a plant based gelatin as opposed to you know, I think I think Jello used to uh, do like they used to boil down cow hides and everything, and I, I they may be plant based now. I don't I I'm not sure. I'll have to check out check it out. Hey Haley in the room. Hi Haley, how you doing? Uh, is your sister gonna join us or is it just you today? Haley, my granddaughter, uh, just entered the room. So let's keep it clean. Uh, uh, Haley, where's your mom? Is your mom going to join us today? Cane sugar and grass jelly make good drinks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not, not a big fan of sweet stuff, but, you know, a little bit of sugar is nice. I, I, I was yelling and Doodle came running. I think maybe he thinks I was calling him. But uh, Okay, Doodle. Um, you know what? Let's pace you on the snacks. We, we should get started because, like, we're, like, uh, uh, um, 39 minutes in. So we should probably get started on this next. Oh, uh, before we start, one more thing. So for those who don't know, uh, my birthday was a few days ago. And um, and so naturally, I got food for my birthday. So uh, Claudia uh, went to, I think she went to um, um, Cost Plus World Market and got a bunch of uh, snacks. And so uh, this is stuff that we're gonna you're, you're going to see on upcoming episodes and everything. So... Um, here is a, um, it says match flavor. I don't think it's like a, like a sulfur matches. I think it's mat, it's like it's really a matcha tea, uh, but it's, it says a match flavor bubble milk tea drink. So that's a, a drink you'll see coming up. Uh, we have uh, these lovely bubble gum yogurt pretzels. Uh, we have this, uh, it's called Cavi Art, which is like uh, black seaweed pearls. So it's like a plant, it's like a plant based um caviar which is really interesting so we have a few other snacks in there so that'll be fun and then uh julie for my birthday sent me this which is it's kind of like if you're familiar with munchbox where uh they send you a box full of like snacks from all over the world but this one is specific 
This one is called um, uh, Retrobox International Snack Variety Pack, and this particular one is from Turkey. So it looks like on the outside, it looks like they're listing the things that are inside, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen. Uh, oh no, it says eleven. That's really weird. Eleven individual snacks. Uh, so there are eleven snacks in here from Turkey, and uh, and so like like I said, we will. Um, I, I thought about maybe doing like a whole episode there. I, I don't know if I want to eat eleven snacks in a row from Turkey. So I think what we'll do is we'll just filter these in as well over the next few uh, weeks on our live stream, and we'll do some of these uh, Turkish snacks from uh, Retrobox from uh, Julie, my uh, birthday present. Thank you, Julie. Oh, okay. Julie's already in the room. Hi, hon. Uh, just pop in to say a quick hello. Uh, okay. Is Haley going to stay a while, though? Hey, Jules. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you just saw that. We were just going over one of your um, one of your birthday presents, so or one of your, your birthday presents to me. Uh, the other one is that, um, trying to get that, my finger there, right there is one of those um, metal signs, and it's a, um, like an old advertisement for spam. So, you know, we're spamming out today. The shirt, the sign, we're not going to eat any spam, though. So. Uh, Sonic said, hello, Doodle. Did, oh, Doodle's just chilling right here. All right, so he's uh, he's just chilling. We'll, 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 we'll snack, we'll let him snack. We'll do that. Uh, did I miss anybody else? Did I miss anything? I, I want to make sure I cover everything. Happy birthday again, Dad. Well, thank you, Julie, and happy birthday again to you. It's like, what's it been, like five days, six days, something like that? But, yeah. Yeah, Julie and I were we were born close close together, not really close together. I mean, I'm not talking about day, days of the week um, because, obviously, she's um, 20, year, 20 years my junior uh julie haley val and drew and me are all february babies yeah well now there's even more than that there's even but, but in the room here yeah um anybody any other february babies let us know oh sonic so sonic is uh february as well i'm trying to think i'm trying to backtrack nine months from from february and figure out why i know so many people born in february like what happened nine months before february but uh my birthday twin Bill says hi, Judy too. Uh, well, tell uh, tell birthday twin Bill I said hello as well. So, uh, re really funny because because Julie has uh, Julie has her father and her stepfather born on the same day, a year apart, but um, same day. It's kind of weird. All right, let's get started on our snacks because we're because time's a wasting. Uh, okay, so um, as who was it? Was it Bob mentioned the cards or, or Phil? Philip mentioned the cards. So we will pretend to read a card before we open our first snack. I wish Cass the Cassandra is not in the room, but we're going to have to start without her. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's find a good one. Uh, I'm trying to remember because I'm reading off the same list that we did these. Oh, here's a good one. What is the first food that was eaten in space? Again, the question is, what is the first food that was eaten in space? So this goes on our fake back burner, and we're going to turn that fake to low since it's not actually the card that we're reading. And um, <laughs> Tom, you do not disappoint. Uh, I don't, Sonic, I do not know where Amy Cakey is, but sometimes she joins towards the end. So, you know, there's still time. Uh, so let's go ahead and open our first snack, which is our Trader Joe's Organic Mango Fruit Bar. And it's funny because, because as small as this looks, it also feels like it's all packaging. It feels like the thing inside it is not very large either. And it's not. So so I was wondering, you know, was this going to be like an energy bar? Was it going to be like a fruit leather? And it's kind of like both. I mean, that looks really like moist. It looks like I, I'm trying to like um, it almost looks like the like the filling from a big Newton. I bet it's going to be sweet as heck. Let's see. Um, is there sugar in here? Ingredients, organic dried mangoes. That's it? Just mangoes. It's all it is is mango. All right, let's give this a shot. It's like mango jerky. I kind of like that texture. That's like Fig Newton texture. It tastes like jelly. 
I mean, it's all mango, so you definitely get that mango flavored. If you've ever eaten like dried mangoes, that's there. There's no artificial sweetener to that. It's not exceptionally sweet, like there's no sugar added. Is my first shirt the first clue? Uh, no, uh, Sonic spam. It's not spam. <laughs> Space claws. <laughs> That's funny. It is like fruit leather, um, uh, but not as thin because you know th fruit leather is a lot thin. I'm trying to think of what I would describe it like. It's nice. It's like. Um, I think that would be nice if you like put that in, a, like you're gonna make something baked and you just put that inside it. That would be like really nice. So yeah, all it is is just pure mango flavor. Um, it doesn't taste like sulfury or anything. Like they don't sulfur it. Um, you know, it's not overly sweet. Um, it has a nice chewy texture to it and everything. That's gonna get a big thumbs up for me. So yeah, nice. All right. Like dried prunes. Um, no, no, this is more dense than like than any kind of you know plain fruit. It it maybe maybe if they took dried prunes and and they took them and they made this big stack of them and they squished them all together, it might have that. But uh, I'm changing my answer to meat paste by a cosmonaut. Oh, so so maybe you looked that up and you found uh, maybe they're they're talking about astronaut. I I don't know. Um, Maybe they mean by, um, did they send monkeys up to space? I don't know, but they didn't orbit. They just sent them up into the atmosphere and had them come back down again. Candied prunes. No. Yeah, uh, uh, Scott, maybe like uh, for like the, the little bits of fruit that you get in a fruit cake. No, without the cake, obviously. So, it, yeah, it is similar to that. It would go good in a fruit cake. Yes, it would absolutely go good in a fruit cake. I wish the internet was that so you could stick your food in the camera. We could all get to reach out for the food. That would be cool. It would be even cooler if I could like hand it out and you could grab a piece of it and eat it. That would be even better. Although I don't think I have enough here to share. Um, uh, so yeah, thumbs way up on that one. That's really good. It's uh, it's it's not it's it doesn't taste artificial. It's not overly sweet. It's just mango. It's just a dried mango. You know, it's not going to be as satisfying as eating a fresh mango, but it's it's really good. So yeah, thumbs way up. And then you can carry it in your backpack, like you're going hiking or something like that. So it's really nice. So the question was, um, what is the first food eaten in space? I'm, I'm, how's my acting skills? Acting like I'm actually reading it from the card. And the, let's see what answers we had. We had uh, Tom obviously said kum kumquats. Um, sometime I'll take them seriously because the answer will actually be kumquats. Uh, Sonic said ice cream. Initially said ice cream. I think he might have changed it. Janice said potatoes. Um, Julie said spam. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> then Trump said space quats, which sounds like a um, space quats sounds like a like a, a Saturday morning kid show, you know. Although I don't know, I don't know what that would be, but it does kind of sound like that. Uh, and then Sonic said space spam, and then it kind of it, it kind of I was gonna say it kind of fell apart from there, but it really didn't fell apart. It got more interesting, I think. Um, let's see. Uh, the Trader Joe's bar, not necessarily the, the fruit eating in space. So let's see. Uh, 1950s ice cream in a paste tube. Uh, Sonic said ice cream. Yes, we got that. Um, ah, and Philip says Tang, the drink of astronauts. Um, well, you know what? It, maybe, maybe that would be the first drink. Tang would be the first drink. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, a lot of, it's funny because a lot of things that we have, a lot of things that we use were, were, were developed from the space program. Velcro, Velcro was something that was developed for the space program, but you know, then afterwards got used for it. Um, so uh, freeze drying food was something that was used for space, but uh, for the, the uh, uh, I think also um, raids, uh, when I say, when I mean raids, talk about, uh, is it random access? Intelligent drives. I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but uh, hard drives that are rated so that the, that so that the uh, data goes across all the drives. So if one goes out, it continues. So that was developed for the space program as well. So a lot of the things that were developed for the space program are things that we eat on a regular basis. This the answer is not one of them. The answer is in fact applesauce. 
Now, based on some of this research that looks like um, uh, Janice has done, maybe that's not correct. But uh, unfortunately, what I have to go by is applesauce, and applesauce is, is listed as the first thing that astronauts drink. Hey, Area 51 Snipes. Uh, well, happy Saturday to you as well. I don't recognize you as having been in the room before, but please welcome. Uh, welcome to the room. And everybody give Area 51 Snipes a warm and hearty trippy food welcome. All right. Well, you already are. Cup of noodles in space. Um, maybe? I, like, the, But the thing is, like, how do you make that? So you can't like pour the water into it. You can't open it up and pour the water into it. Um, I, and, I, and I guess if, if it, there's still liquid in there, as soon as you open the top to eat it, it's going to go everywhere. So I don't know. I don't know that uh, that like instant ramen or something like that would be. But maybe instant ramen was developed for the space program. I honestly don't know. I like the peanut butter space food sticks. I haven't tried those. I will have to try those. Uh, you're, if you're not Velcro, you have to call your product something else like Hook and loop. Yeah, it's the same with uh, Kleenex or Coke, right? Um, I used to work for a company called Brigham's, which is a, a, a ice cream and sandwich um, shop. Uh, they used to have a whole bunch of them in the Boston area. I think they're out of business. They're gone. They're all gone. But um, they uh, they made their own cola, and they called it Brigham's Cola. And when somebody came in, they says, "Hey, can I have a Coke, or can I have a Pepsi?" You had to say to them, I'm sorry, we don't have those, but we do have Brigham's Cola. Will that be okay? And the reason that you had to do that is because representatives from Coke and Pepsi would come in there and ask that question so that you would say, yeah, sure. And then as soon as you did, they were like, lawsuit. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of products like that. Like, uh, oh, uh, champagne, Phil. Uh, sham well, actually, uh, champagne's a little bit different. So uh, uh, champagne has to be from grapes grown in the Champagne region of France. Otherwise, you can't call it champagne. The only country on earth that, that has an exception to that is the United States. So the United States can, can use whatever grapes they want and call it champagne because we don't abide by that, whatever that, that rule is. That's kind of how that works. Uh, Oscar Mayer's Lunchables in space, that might work. That might, yeah, I mean, I would think lunch, lunch meat is something you could eat in space because you're not going to have stuff like, you know, a little bit. Here's it. Because uh, one of the things that you really have to worry about in space, especially because act, then it could uh, eventually, you know, start rotting in space and you don't want that. So you want you want everything to be either like in your hand, in the package or in your mouth and uh, and nowhere else. So um, so it takes a little bit of doing to do something like that. Um, I get snipe peas a lot. Well, it's one of those things like um, uh, one of those, I guess, urbanized names, you know, uh, where uh, where people just kind of like aren't familiar with it and just kind of like read it as it is. So, uh, well, I'm glad I got it right. So, welcome. So many creations happen on failure of things goes to show you even things done wrong can be right. Correct. Yeah. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. Yeah, and that, I, maybe that's the thing about that uh, that caviar that I was I was showing you earlier is that you know can't call it caviar unless it's actually fish eggs. So they kind of call it caviar. Maybe that's something something along those lines. All right, uh, another snack. No, let's see. Uh, today's beverage day. We have three beverages, so we'll do snack, beverage, snack, beverage, snack, beverage, snack, beverage, snack, beverage, snack, beverage. Is tomorrow your holiday, Valentino's Day? Um, yes and no. I was named after Valentine's Day because I was born near it, but not on it. So it's kind of, uh, um, it wasn't one of those things where like, I didn't get Valentine's Day presents because I was born near Valentine's Day. Just sort of like people who were born on Christmas, which kind of sucks. Like, can you imagine Jesus when he was a kid and people go like, it's kind of like a Christmas birthday present. Um, but no, I didn't have that problem. Um, it was like Valentine's Day was still Valentine's Day and my birthday was still my birthday. But I did get my name from Valentine's Day. So actually, very good. And then remember, Monday is a holiday too. Monday is uh, President's Day. It used to be uh, February 12th was Lincoln's birthday. February 23rd, I want to say. I think it was February 23rd was Washington's birthday. And then uh, decades ago, um, they merged those two together and made it President's Day, which was like the second mo second Monday or third Monday. I can't remember. The second Monday in um, in uh, February. So this coming Monday, the 15th, is President's Day, which is like to mark Lincoln and Washington's birthday, who also February babies. Um, 
Yuri Gagarin, 1961, meat paste. John Glenn, 1962, applesauce. Oh, okay. So that, that's the American version. The American version is that applesauce was the first thing eaten. So it was the first thing eaten by American astronauts, but not the first thing eaten by um, astronauts. Or, you know, uh, maybe, maybe they're drawing the line at astronauts and cosmonauts, which is the same thing, right? No big deal. Seems like all these holidays are together. Chinese New Year... President's Day, Valentine's Day, yeah, pretty much. Pick a holiday and get drunk, or just stay drunk, you know, because you know, over a period of time. All right, uh, so we're gonna do a beverage, and we said that our first one was gonna be our penny wart drink from the company called Foco. I might be saying that wrong. Um, uh, this is from where did I say this was from? Hang on a second. Got to write this stuff down, or I'll forget. Uh, Foco is a Thailand company, a Thai company, and. Um, so uh, if anybody speaks Thai, let me know if I'm saying that wrong, but I'm going to say Foco. My cat is sleeping to the sound of your voice. So cute. Well, cute and scary at the same time. Uh, it reminds me of a story of, uh, uh, that Johnny Carson once said. He said that he saved a man. Uh, that man uh, wrote him a letter and said that he had saved his life. And the reason that Johnny Carson saved his life is the man was sitting in his living room watching the Johnny Carson show. And it was so boring that he decided to go up in bed. So he shut off the TV and went up in bed. And no, no, no more than five minutes later, a car came through his, um, the side of his house and, um, and ended up like uh, in the, at where the couch was, where he, he had just been sitting. So if Johnny Carson had not been boring that night, the guy would have been killed. So he kind of thanked Johnny Carson for that. Uh, my video is really weird. There is like a lag between my voice and what's going on on the screen. Are you guys seeing that? Or are you guys, is it okay? Is my video okay? Let me know. Could be my camera. Started working night, so probably won't be catching any more live streams. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Stoner. Uh, we're always uh, happy to see you. Um, maybe you could just like watch on your phone or something like that. I don't know what you do for work. So like if you're driving, you don't want to do that, but that, that's too bad. Ken Dominic has a cat on his live stream video. Well, that's nice. Uh, I think Matt Zion, usually uh, um, uh, Ziggler, his cat, his black cat, he usually puts him on his live stream. He just shows up. Uh, I don't keep it the same time. Um, and then we have Doodle, Doodle on our show. So. No lag here. All right. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk. I'm gonna look, uh, and I'm gonna ignore the fact that there's a lag between my voice and what I'm seeing. So uh, let's see. Did get choppy for a moment. Overall is good. Good. Good is good. Your video is kind of lagging today. Okay, well, it's really, it's really, really lagging here, but I'm not going to worry about it if you guys, if, if it's okay with you guys. So, video is breaking up. That bites. You know, like I'm, I'm connected to the network, and I seem to have a good connection. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's something at YouTube. Uh, just let me know if it gets really, really bad, and and and. I, I, I can't refresh. I, I mean, I can try to refresh, but I don't know. I don't know if it will disconnect. I can try to like stop the stream and restart the stream, but you know, makes me nervous about doing that. So let's let's try to work through it and see what happens. The screen looks weird. Oh, but then uh, Area Fifty One Snipe says it's fine here. There's like a ghost image. Yeah, it's it's there's a, there's a little bit of lag here. I'm seeing, all I'm seeing is lag. I'm not seeing like pixelization or anything like that. So, hey, Snorkel, welcome to the room. Didn't see a sneak in there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do our Foco uh, Penny Wart drink, but we got to read a card first or pretend to read a card first. Uh, let's see. That's a dumb question. Uh, we asked that question last time, I think. Let's see. Yeah, here's a good one. Um, what is, and again, remember, phobia is fear of. What is Majiro, Majirocophobia? Majirocophobia. I think I'm saying that right. It is M A G E I R O C O phobia. Majirocophobia. I think that's what it is. What is Majirocophobia? Again, we'll put this back on the burner that is now out and pretend to turn it on low. And it'll sit there. And let's go on with our penny wart drink. I'm about to head into work. Nice spending some time in the room. Well, nice to have you, Drew. You are welcome anytime. 
um, although we, we always kind of do it at the same time on Saturdays, unless we don't. Uh, but uh, you're always welcome here, and it's always good to see you. So um, have a good day uh, at work, and be careful. Water out of a out of a fish tank that needs cleaning. See that? It's kind of like greenish. Ew. Like swamp water. It smells nice. I'm trying to remember if this one had any kind of sugar added to it. Let's see, ingredients, pennyworth leaf extract, sugar, citric acid, citric acid. That's kind of weird. It, it says citric acid and then ES380A5 acidity regulator. Why do you put in citric acid and then put in a, 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 an acidity regulator? Doesn't make any sense. Don't add acid if you're going to have to put something in to regulate the acid. But anyways, cheers. Ooh, that's weird. That's like nothing I've ever tasted before. It's not bad weird. It's just weird weird. And the citric acid isn't enough like where you go like you, you're, you're tasting it. You go like, oh, it tastes like lemon juice or, or orange juice or lime juice or anything like that. I haven't really tasted the sugar they added. Maybe it's a bitter, um, a bitter plant. It's gonna get a thumbs up. Maybe not a thumbs like way up. It's just like it's really like nothing I've ever tasted before. It's really interesting. Uh, I I can't describe it as anything I've had before. Um, maybe maybe the closest thing I I could compare it to would be like grass jelly, but. But not even like that. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of refreshing, almost like minty, refreshing. So, um, yeah, it's going to get a thumbs up at e e either way. Thumbs up. So well, there we go. Uh, let's do Let's read our card. Uh, the question was um, Majirocophobia. Uh, I think I said that right. Majirocophobia is the fear of what? And the answers were, let's see, uh, fear of kumquats. Yes, we all have that fear of kumquats. Uh, phobia of phobias. That's interesting. I like that. Uh, Janice says fear of cooking. Let's see. Was there any other ones? There were not any other ones. Uh, Janice, you're absolutely right. It is fear of cooking. Put that card away. Pull another one to exactly like it. What sort of bandwidth do you get at home, Val? It might be a slab tad slow at times refresh wise. Maybe, but typically we don't have this problem. Uh, typically, like, I think it, uh, typically, we don't have that lag problem. So this is just like an unusual thing. And maybe like everybody's using the internet at the same time. And maybe that's what it is. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, cooking is so fun. Yeah. But some, you know, uh, I know a lot of people that can't cook. And it's, and it's maybe it's it's not that they can't cook. It's that they don't cook. And maybe that's, it's it's fear. Like they, they just panic. They don't, they freeze up. And like, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do, you know, like, and they panic about cooking and like, um, we grew up in an Italian-American household where my mom taught us to cook at a very young age. And so for us, cooking was like, you know, second nature. Um, Philip, who I think, yes, you're still in the room. We're headed to a Latin market tomorrow. Any recommendations? Oh, ooh. Um, if it's a Latin market where they actually make, like, some of them have like a little cafe or something uh, where they're making stuff. Uh, that were prepared foods there. If they are, get get yourself some birria, and and especially if it's goat birria, definitely try that. I would say uh, I would definitely recommend that. Um, also, if they're making their own chicharron, get that because it's going to be a lot different than anything you're going to get in a bag. Usually, like they, it's like this this big slab of uh, pig skin. I would definitely I would definitely try that. Um, uh, it depends on whether they have. Um, if it's um, Latin American, like they have stuff from uh, South America and Central America, um, see if they have morcilla, which is a blood sausage, but it's really, really good. I know you, I know you about the blood thing, but but trust me on it, it's really good. See if they have a morcilla. That's M O R C I L L A, uh, which is like a blood sausage, which is really good. Um, I will text you some stuff later. I will text you some 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 stuff to look at. Um, if you uh, now you like to cook and you're very good at it. Um, I would suggest getting some cactus pads, uh, nopales, which is the, the, the cactus pads. Get some cactus pads, make yourself a nice cactus dish. Uh, it's, a, it's a very refreshing, um, you know, green vegetable. Uh, 
if you uh, it kind it's kind of like a refreshing green beanie kind of thing. Uh, just make sure you parboil it first, first because it's like okra where it can be kind of snotty when you cook it. So I would say that. I miss you too, Haley. Hopefully we'll see you soon. This you know how things are crazy right now, and 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 we can't. But hopefully pops will come up and see you soon. Are you running through a phone or webcam? Webcam, webcam through my computer. So and and the computer it's not wireless. It's you know it's tied directly to the network. So I don't I don't know. Kind of weird. Maybe everyone is doing Zoom Valentines. No, they do Zoom everything else. Why not? Uh, Callie waved and Audrey said hi. Well, tell Callie and, and Audrey that I said hello as well. Hello to Callie and Audrey. I hope you're enjoying, enjoying our channel. All right. So we did uh, snack. We did beverage. Time for another snack. And we are, gonna, we are going to try our click balls, which are uh, chocolate, chocolate flavored or chocolate covered corn puffs from Israel. And they're kosher. So we're going to give that a shot. We're going to let's, let's read another card. Uh, let's see. No, we got that. No, we got that. Yes. Um, so the question is, what is the main ingredient of the cream used to fill a Twinkie? Again, the question, what is the main ingredient of the cream used to fill a Twinkie? Put that on the back burner, which is now cold. You should do a Zoom show. I didn't know people were doing Zoom shows. Really? That's interesting. I love using cabbage finely sliced in so many dishes. Yeah. Uh, hey, here's an idea, uh, Area 51 Snipes. See if you can get some uh, banana uh, banana flour and use banana flour instead of cabbage. Now, the, the thing is, is um, you're going to have to put it in water and store it in water because it's one of those things that oxidizes really quick. So as you cut it, it's like starts sort of like a lotus root where it starts turning or uh, avocado. It starts turning black because it's, it oxidizes really quick. So if you're going to use... Uh, 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 banana flour, um, uh, put it in, uh, you know, put it in water, but, uh, but definitely try that as a substitute for the cabbage and be really interesting. Uh, you can usually get banana flowers at, uh, Asian markets, bigger, the bigger Asian markets. Uh, I, I asked, oh, I asked the question and, uh, so, uh, people are starting to answer it, which is good. All right. Uh, take care. I've got to cook some more. Hey, okay, Sonic. Well, uh, thank you for making trippy food a part of your afternoon. We'll see you soon. Uh, okay. Uh, just want to make sure I catch everything. All right. So we read the card. Let's open up our click ball, which raises the question, as Tom would raise the question, how do you click balls? Don't answer that, please. Do you love the crunch of cabbage and substitution of lettuce that goes bad so fast? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, again, like I said, uh, banana flour is nice, but you have to, like I said, you have to keep it into water until you're going to eat it because it does oxidize very quickly. I mean, it turns black, but it's still edible. It's sort of like, you know, um, like if you have uh, like brown spots on the avocado after you open it up because it starts to oxidize, it doesn't change the flavor. It's still fine. It's just, you know, some people just don't like that color. It has a chocolatey smell, but it's sort of like uh, the, I'm not really crazy about the smell of the kind of chocolate. It's a milk chocolate, and it smells like Easter Bunny chocolate. And it looks like a deer just pooped in my hand. It seriously does. I mean, they're, sm they're much smaller than malted milk balls. And I was almost... You know, my mind kind of went to malted milk balls and was expecting that taste. You don't get that taste because they're not, it's not, there's no malt inside it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a good um, exercise, Tom. Use click ball in a sentence. So if you're out there, use click ball in a sentence. Just think before you put it in the chat. If it's going to be family friendly, because we have family out there. I'm always disappointed because these are corn puffs. You're not really getting that corn puff taste. Really, all you're getting is the chocolate. It's a really nice texture. It's like a crunchy texture. It's a really nice texture. But all you're getting is the chocolate. Now, 
I will apologize because it is a better quality chocolate than Easter Bunny chocolate. And the chocolate's not bad for milk chocolate. I would prefer dark, dark chocolate, but milk chocolate's nice. Um, but it is it is a decent quality um, milk uh, milk chocolate. Um, really nice texture. I like that crunchiness of it, but not really getting corn flavor. Maybe that's good because like who really wants corn flavor when you're eating chocolate, right? That's kind of thing. A thumbs up for me. Uh, did I miss anything here? What I said before the stream is you cook, yeah. Uh, corn and chocolate, I would never think to work. Yeah, I, I e e either one. Guess chocolate overpowers most taste. Yeah, it kind of seals that, but you would think it would seal that flavor in it, but it doesn't. You're really not getting a lot of the corn flavor. But maybe that's good. Maybe that's okay. So thumbs up on that. The question was, what is the, cre what is the cream in the middle of a Twinkie made from? And let's see, answers were marshmallow. Tom said marshmallow and not kumquat, which is really odd. Uh, Snorkel said heavy whipping cream. Scott Manfield said powdered sugar. Uh, Janice said sugar. Um, that is a big ingredient, but it's not the main ingredient. The main ingredient is vegetable shortening. And you know, you know, you have to know in your heart of hearts that if it's vegetable shortening now, that like in the 1960s, it was lard. I bet you anything it was lard. Because it's just like, like uh, Oreos. Uh, prior to the 1990s, even uh, they were the, the cream filling in Oreos was made from lard, uh, which is pig, pig fat. Like, yeah, like pig fat. I guess it is. Um, that's what that's what the, the the main filling of Oreos was up to the 1990s. In the 1990s, they changed it to like vegetable oil or vegetable shortening. So there we have it. That goes there. Uh, Cocoa Puffs is a corn and chocolate cereal. It is, but the but the thing is, is it, it it's more mixed together. So it's corn based, but there's so much the chocolate permeates that. So really, all you're getting is the chocolate flavor. I think on that. So I think Kix is the one that would be more like if you were to eat Kix, and then uh, maybe oh, so so here would be an interesting experiment to try to replicate this is is to eat a bowl of of Kix cereal with chocolate milk. And see what that does. That would probably that would probably be the closest to that to 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 actually getting the separation of the corn flavor and the um, and the chocolate flavor is to is to try Kix cereal with chocolate. Now, if cereal file is here, that would be like a challenge I would issue to her. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe I think maybe we would do that. I'm gonna do that. Um, issue that challenge and try Kix cereal. If we, if, I don't even know is Kix cereal still around, but if we if so, we're gonna try that. See what that uh, see what happens. Cocoa, but uh, I agree with you on the cocoa puffs thing. Uh, processed corn flavor it really isn't corn in cereal. Yeah, true. Uh, you don't get it's not like you're eating a cor corn on the cob or getting that corn. So uh, we did uh, snack beverage snack time for another beverage. So which means time for another card. So. Let's see. No, we've done that one before. Huh. What is... Okay, let's at, pretend like I'm reading the card. Uh, what is a substance in ranch dressing that gives it its bright white color? Again, the question, what is the substance in ranch dressing that gives it its bright white color? Put this on the very, very cold back burner right now. Oh, Kex is still around. Cool. Okay. Uh, looking at the chat, I feel like I might be spamming. I apologize. I don't think so. Uh, as long as as long as you are uh, adding to the conversation, um, you can you can uh, chat as much as you want, and people will chat back, and people will you know will actually get into there. Uh, just make sure that you don't have top chat on, and, and if you're the 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 top chatter, you're the only one that's going to show in there. But uh, but no, if, if it's uh, if it's pertinent to the discussion uh, going on, then just throw it out there. Or if you're saying hello to people, throw it out there. You know. So if you were going off on a tangent somewhere, if you were like spamming the group, then I would say something. But uh, but if it's pertinent to the discussion going on, you know, don't feel like you're you're you know keeping other people from texting because they seem to be doing that just fine. Um, okay. Uh, so we did snack, beverage snack, time for the beverage. And we are going to do our Wonder Farm Bird's Nest drink. And again, remember, this is not Bird's Nest like Bird's Nest soup. This is a Bird's Nest fungus. 
Uh, I, I said early on that, you know, look that up because the bird's nest, the bird's nest fungus is really kind of cute. It looks like a tiny little bird's nest, which is why they call it that. But there's no, there's no bird in it. I think we will use our Big Bear Lake uh, little crystally snowflake, snowflake glass. Hey, Ryan Jones. Ryan, did I catch you earlier? I think I caught you earlier. I sometimes forget. I get caught up in the moment and I forget. This is clear, but it looks like there's some lumpy stuff. Oh, look at that. Can you guys see that? It looks like there's like some lumpy stuff in there. You can't see that. Hang on a second. I'll fix it so that you can. Do the old light behind the glass trick. Is that going to work? Too much light. Maybe light from above? Maybe light from below? Maybe light from the side? Nope. There's there's like there's like gelatinous lumps in there. And and I can't really uh, I can't really show you that really well. But it's really thick. Very, very thick. No smell, no smell at all. I'm going to bounce out and play my Overwatch on PC. Have a great evening. Well, thank you for um, Area 51 Snipes for making us part of your afternoon. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. We'll see you soon. That's weird. That is a fungus. I don't know why it's like gelatinous like that. Maybe that's the fungus itself. It's sort of sweet. Let's see, did they put sugar in here? Uh, let's see, ingredients, water, white fungus, sugar. Yep, there we go, sugar. Oh, vanilla flavoring, artificial vanilla flavor. That's weird. Why? There is an eagle cam right now on Big Bear Lake. Do they, do they have, uh, uh, they have uh, bald eagles on Big Bear Lake? Or are they the California brown eagles? Which which eagles they have on, on Big Bear? I didn't know that. Um, I didn't know the bald eagles came this far south. When I lived in Oregon, we used to see bald eagles all the time, just flying over the house, you know. But um, but I don't know if they come that far south. I hope at the end you mix those juices together, Scott. I do not disappoint. Well, I do sometimes, but not in that not in that case. Gelatinous lump sounds like my body type. <laughs> uh, I would never say that to you, Wendy. Never. I can't say that that's satisfying or refreshing. It's really not. It's a really unusual drink. Like, I don't know what you would, I don't know what the application of that drink would be. It's like, like, hey, everybody, who would like a bird's nest drink? Um, it's just kind of like an odd thing. I don't know why they put the vanilla in it, though. I don't like, what would it taste like without the vanilla in it? It's kind of odd. But uh, nice. It's nice. I like it because it's an unusual taste. I'm, I'm trying it, but I can't get past. I'm going to give them a thumbs in the middle on this one, only because they they obliterate whatever flavor is in there with the with the vanilla. Like, why do they flavor it with vanilla? I, I would, it would be, int be interesting to see what it tastes like without the vanilla. So that's going to get a thumbs in the middle for me because it it doesn't suck, but but I'm dying to know what it tastes what it would taste like without the vanilla. So yeah, just thumbs in the middle on that one. All righty, now our card. And the question was, what is the substance in ranch dressing that gives it its bright white color? And the answers were, uh, or the, the responses were, uh, bald eagles. No, I'm just kidding. Really, bald eagles. That's interesting. I didn't realize they came this far south. The eagles sitting on eggs. Wow. I'm going to have to check that out. Tom, can you, put up a, can you uh, post a link to that? That's kind of cool. And are we, are we talking about Big Bear Lake in California, right? That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> not the only one practice, practicing melodic minor on the third of a dominant seven chord right now. Ryan, uh, Bob, if he's still out there, he might be doing that. Uh, Philip Gerard might be doing that. Uh, I have no idea what the melodic minor on a third of a dominant seven chord sounds like. So uh, I, I've done music in the past, but I don't know my... A from my E. Um, let's see. Uh, we had uh, buttermilk, titanium, buttermilk. Old guy. Uh, Tom, I'm surprised. You said buttermilk and not um, kumquats. 
Uh, Janice Yamanaka said titanium dioxide. That was very specific. I think that's all we had. Oh, and uh, Linado one, uh, titanium dioxide as well. Well, it is in fact titanium dioxide. So you are correct. And 10 points to each one of you, and we're not keeping track. So, all right. Uh, we did snack, beverage, snack, beverage. Time for another snack. Class, Mr. Spicoli has brought us a snack. All right. So uh, you have to have a question before the snack. What fruit were called starberries by Native Americans? Again, the question, what fruits were called starberries by Native Americans? It's not even going to the, it's, this one's going to the microwave. It's not even going to the burner. And we're not going to turn the microwave on. So we are going to eat our Nika brand. At least I think I'm pronouncing that right, Nika. Somebody, if, if anybody knows, correct me if I'm wrong. And these were from, where did I say, Japan? Uh, Nika is from Japan, yes. And these are cuttlefish, cuttle, ugh, cuttlefish flavored chips, but they're also shrimp flavored. There's shrimp in here too, so I don't know why they don't mention the shrimp. Uh, we got like a lot of sediment in the bottom. I'm gonna open them this way. Oh, did uh, Tom? Did you did you did you text that to me, or, or did you send it to me on Messenger? I thought you were going to put it in the chat, but that's okay. Yeah, i got to check that out. That's kind of really cool. Ooh. These smell weird. And they don't smell like cuttlefish. They don't smell like shrimp. They smell They smell like chemicals. That is weird. Maybe it's the bag. Weird. All right, here we go. Wow. Interesting combination of flavors. They're not, I would thought that these would be salty, but they're not really salty. They almost taste like they could use some salt. They're sweet. I don't think they should be sweet. Could be wrong. Let's see. Ingredients, starch, vegetable oil. Oh, we did this at the beginning. There is sugar in there. Kind of weird. The salt is really light. The texture of these chips are really weird. They're not like potato chips, but they're not like corn chips. No, oh, they're rice, of course. I can't say it tastes like rice chips because I don't have a lot of experience with rice chips. Um, they're very savory. You do get the... Um, you do get that crustacean mollusk flavor. When it comes in afterwards, you got to eat quite a few of them to get that flavor in there. Um, they're really weird, but, you know, weird in a good way. So I'm going to give that a thumbs up. These are really good. Odd, but good. All right. So you might have to enable links in chat, Val. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I might have to do that. I don't know how to do that right now. Um, so, Tom... Um, Send that to me. Uh, oh, you did. Okay. Let me see if I can. I can. I know I can do it. So let me grab what you just sent me and put it on that chat. There we go. If I can copy that, there we go. All right. There we go. So there is there is the um, live stream of the Eagle's Nest in, uh, I mean, a literal eagle's nest, a bald eagle nest in Big Bear, California. So uh, thank you, Tom, for that. And enjoy. I will check that out later. Um, I thought it was interesting. Who is it? Somebody said starfruit here. Wendy said starfruit. And then Janice said carambola, which is interesting because starfruit is carambola. Um, the question was, Let's go back to the question. What was the question? It's not on this card. I don't know why I'm looking at this card for it. The question was, where did that go? Oh, uh, what fruit were called starberries by the Native Americans? And so uh, the popular question was, I mean, the popular, let's see, Scott uh, Scott Mansfield said tomato, which is a good guess. 
Uh, Wendy said starfruit. Linnea one said blueberries. Let's see. Uh, Janice said carambola, which is starfruit. And the correct answer is Linnea one. You are correct. It is blueberries. Uh, all right. Cool. Again, goes back in the microwave oven with the uh, unplugged microwave oven. Uh, beverage time again. And now we are going to to drink our palm juice. And this palm juice, uh, again, not sure about this because it says sap. And sap comes from the tree itself as opposed to the fruit, but it has pictures of palm fruit on it. I, I, I don't know what to expect on this one. Uh, this is from Sun Li is the company, and they're from Thailand. And uh, because I, I have Ariel here, but I'm not going to use Ariel because the point always ruins the bottle cap and has a unique bottle cap where I'm going to save. So I'm going to use Richard Simmons instead. There we go. Oh, and it has sound as well. Ooh. That smells familiar. What is that smell? Wow, that's weird. That's such a strange smell. It smells familiar, but I think ingredients, sap of coconut. Those are the only ingredients, the sap of the coconut. So why would that smell so familiar? That's so weird. All right, we're going to use our San Antonio shot glass. And that is clear, so there's nothing exciting about it. We could have used an opaque shot glass. It would have made a difference. Cheers. It tastes like the penny what drink. That's weird. You know, it's like um, being that it's from a palm palm fruit. You you would think that um, it would be like a coconut, uh, maybe maybe coconut flavored, uh, or like a, a dates come from palms. You would like maybe it would taste like a date, but it doesn't. It's a really unique flavor, and really sugary. But there's no sugar added, so it's really kind of strange. Well, that's gonna get a thumbs up. Uh, really, really weird flavors. I would think you know, these things would be interesting to cook with. Um, probably not the uh, bird's nest one because they add that vanilla in it. But uh, but the pennywort drink certainly and the palm juice uh, would be interesting to cook with. Maybe it's it's possible that this is specifically there's no alcohol in it. Uh, it's possible that this is specifically for uh, cooking as opposed to drinking. But because uh, it's really nice. And it's it's naturally sweet on its own, but um, yeah, kind of odd. But uh, anyways, yeah, thumbs up on that. Uh, did we read? Did we do the card? We did the card. No, we didn't do a card. We didn't have, We didn't do a new card uh, after the um, the uh, starberries, did we? We did not. All right, that's okay. I think we didn't. I don't think we did. Did we? Help me out here. Keep me honest. Are we even connected? Uh, let's see. I got to find another question here. Penny Wart sounds like something you need a doctor for, or or or, or like Penny Wart the clown. You know, it sounds like a like a, a murderer or something. Oh, here's some good questions. Yeah, let's ask these questions. We have one snack left, but before we go on to our snacks, let's try all our beverages. Let's see if they help each other out. Let's see if they're cooperative. So uh, here's our penny wart drink. The one that looks like swamp water. Here's our uh, bird's nest fungus drink with the lumpy stuff and the vanilla, artificial vanilla in it. Ooh, that was weird. And here is our palm juice. This is going to be really sweet. I can tell you that right now. I think this might be one of the first uh, live streams we did without uh, with without soda, with not you know, not drinking soda. So th these are all like drink, you know, uh, not non um, non carbonized, carbonated, non carbonated beverages. 
okay, there's no smell anymore. Can I ask the question again? Oh, no. Okay. Yes, the question was, what was the question? You know what? I, forget, I think I forgot. Oh, no, no, no. We weren't doing a question for this. We weren't doing a question for this. So I didn't ask a question, but we will. I was looking at the questions, but didn't actually ask it. So I will, I will ask I will ask it before we do our last snack. Yeah. Or I could ask a question now anyway. Hey, there's the Cassandra. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry you're late too, but it's always good to see you. Uh, there's no, we don't have any like we, we're not we're not punching the clock or anything here. So uh, so you're welcome at any time. Glad you were able to stop in. We're pretending to read from the cards because we 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 ran out. We um, we went through the entire stack of cards, so we're we're pretending to act now. Um, Tom, old guy in Colorado. Uh, I think it was you that was mentioning, hey, uh, can we ask the question again because video froze up, but I didn't ask the question because we were just we were just doing our concoction of our drinks. Ooh, look at that. You see that stuff floating in there? That's that that fungus, I think. Interesting. That looks nasty. Um, so um, well, uh, we'll just ask a question anyways. We don't need, we, it doesn't have to be before we eat or drink something. We'll just ask the question anyways. So the question is, where was the first Pizza Hut built? Again, the question he says as he pretends he's reading from the card is, where was the first Pizza Hut built? And that one goes in the sink. It's not even going to go on the stove. Ne never mind the back burner. Never mind the uh, microwave oven. And now let's drink this concoction, which is a little bit of pennywort drink. A little bit of bird's nest drink, bird's nest fungus, and a little bit of palm juice. Cheers. Oh, in the glass that Julie gave me for my birthday. It's for beer, but, you know, we'll make exceptions. That's some weird taste. The, the problem is that... The vanilla they add to the um, bird's nest is the is the strongest taste in here. That the, the the fake vanilla, which is sad. It still has that unique palm fruit uh, flavor though. I'm gonna give that a thumbs in the middle. It's not something like it's not something I would drink all the time, but it's not horrible, and it's not something you know. It, I don't get it. I wouldn't get excited about it or anything like that. Yeah, sometimes a little on that. If you ever so desire to take those three things and put them together. So our card that we asked, uh, where was first Pizza Hut built? Uh, let's see. We have Wichita, 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 Kansas, Wichita, Kansas, Wichita, 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 Wichita. Everybody's saying Wichita. It is, in fact, Wichita. I don't know if you had to look that up or not, but it doesn't matter because we're not. Oh, uh, 10 points. So for, for those of you keeping score. I'm not. And let's go on to our last snack. And our last snack is this, which is all in Chinese. So I have to go back to what I wrote down so I know what it is. It is, uh, the company is, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, and I apologize uh, to anybody out there who speaks Chinese. It looks like Anhui Yushi Yue. And uh, this is salted egg fish skin from China. That sounds pretty good. I'm actually looking forward to this. And it has the uh, Proposition 60 